Let's look in depth at a form and the user's experience with that form. This week you're being asked to add another page to your site and this will be easier if you follow a few simple steps. In your current index.html page, make sure you have a link in your menu to the index and the form.html page. You may have to add it. Duplicate the index page and rename it form.html. In the new page, remove all the content of the main tag. Move the active link to the form menu item. In the header of the page, add a link to the new forms.css file you're supposed to create. At the bottom of the page, add a link to the new validate.js file that you're being asked to create. Now you're ready to get to work on the form for this week. Now let's talk about the user experience with your web form. Here's the basics of an if statement that compares the value of username1 to the value of username2. If the values match, then the stuff inside is skipped and no action is taken. In this web form submission, the values do match, so no error message is generated and the user is happy. The other possibility is that the values in the username do not match. So these lines of code are then executed and the message is shown to the user. The user is still happy because they know exactly what the problem is and they just need to try again. The problem comes when they try again and the usernames do match, but the error message is still showing from the previous try. The user is now sad, confused, and angry. We need to update our script to account for this third possibility. We need to add an else to our if statement that gets triggered when the usernames do match. In this case, we would remove the error message and the user would again be happy because the confusing error message was removed. This is covered in the code pen this week, but I wanted you to realize that this is a user experience problem that is being solved by this code. Now let's talk about selecting HTML elements. In your form, you are asked to have an ID added to each input like this. This way you can use query selector to reference the ID and then do something with it, like get its value. This approach works great. However, there are other ways to perform this task. If you found that the input did not have an ID, then you could still select it using input name equals pass one like this. Then you could still get a value the same as before. Isn't JavaScript so cool? Now let's talk about events. When we build our hamburger navigation for small screens, we used a click event. When we implemented dark mode, we also used a click event. When we compared the values in our form, we used focus out event. For the slider, the user will be changing the value as they move it left or right. For this, you can use the change or input event. I hope this has been helpful and will give you a good start on this week's assignments.